hello and welcome back to my channel everyone well today i'm back with the lesson from your evs book that is chapter 5 response of living beings to changes in environment all right well this chapter deals with like how we respond we human beings have our different uh, emotions we have our different way of modifying ourselves because we are superior animals because of our brain structure but what about uh, the other animals what about the other um, you know uh, lives that we will find out in this chapter okay the different habitats um, sorry the different animals have their different habitats okay different organisms they uh, have their own adjustments to be done and any change in the environment is sure to cause a change in the conditions of a habitat and organisms living in that habitat are bound to change themselves accordingly okay so whenever they encounter any change when whenever there is a possibility of any kind of modification they also respond to such changes how do they respond that we will find out in this chapter okay so conditions of environment are governed by certain climatic factors that is temperature humidity wind and rains because of these climatic factors climatic elements we have a lot of uh, fluctuations in our surroundings okay so these are the primary uh, factors these factors cause abrupt as well as periodic changes in the environment based on their modification sometimes we are having excessive excessive temperature sometimes we are having unseasonal rainfall sometimes we are having uh, you, you know a uh, 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 quick advent of winter so all these changes are uh, not very regular so climate is changing abruptly so thus we okay now okay now we will see that how the how the different animals like organisms often plan their life cycles according to periodic changes okay but sudden changes like storm you know earthquake etc don't give them enough time to plan and protect themselves so what happens sometimes during winter most of the cold blooded animals like frog lizards snakes they evade the change and hibernate okay they go into deep winter sleep which is called hibernation on the other hand warm blooded animals like the birds and the mammals have fur or feathers on their bodies to protect them from from cold they may also move under the shelter to pass cold um, you know just to pass cold nights man another mammal wears woolen lives in houses and makes fire to adjust or adapt himself to cold okay so the seasons will change accordingly the temperatures and other modifications will be on okay so uh, the animals uh, the hu- hu- uh, humans have more options to cover themselves to protect themselves but uh, not all the animals so few animals they go into deep uh, state of sleep that we call hibernation all right now we will see what is called adaptation adapting means to be able to adjust being able to uh, modify uh, ourselves according to our environment so what are the adaptations and um, uh, you know modifications that we will see so adaptation literally means the structural and functional modifications that enable an organism to adjust in a particular environment in which it lives okay so that is called ad- uh, ad- adaptation if an organism fails to adapt in the changing environmental condition it is sure to become an extinct organism okay like we have the we we are well well aware of the word extinct okay so uh, some examples can be you know dodo the asian tiger the red headed ducks have already gone extinct because they were not being able to adjust with the surrounding okay why the dinosaurs Uh, like disappeared it is nothing but um, you know their uh, maladjusted pattern they could not under the, uh, you know get adjusted to the climate okay so all these uh, actually happen when they are not being able to adjust then they become uh, you know uh, very endangered and uh, subsequently they become extinct okay 
now adaptation in plants how do they adopt that we will see they grow in different types of climates like desert plains mountains fresh water marine water okay so the plants growing in the desert and sands are called xerophytes so they are the special plants which uh, which are called you know agave we have algae we have acacia okay all these are the plants which can tolerate the sandy and very dry uh, desert soil okay so these plants act usually develop very long roots and they help to become um, they help to suck the water uh, or to soak the water um, in search of water actually their roots become very very uh, deep rooted okay the plants have fleshy stems and less or no leaves to survive in the dry and hot conditions for example spiny leaves of cactus minimize surface area uh, and loss of water through thr- through, through transpiration stems of these plants are usually covered with thick waxy layer to reduce the water loss so all these are the adjustments or modifications that the cactus and all the plants which are uh, being categorized as a xerophyte do to uh, fight the prevailing conditions secondly we will see that plants that grow in average weather Uh, average weather conditions of moisture and temperature are called mesophyte the normal plants okay like we have mango eucalyptus ba- banyan etc the leaves of mesophytes are usually thin and wax coated they adopt different shapes okay secondly they the leaves have abundant pores scattered on both the surfaces these pores are called stromata they help in the transpiration of excess qual- uh, quantity of water so the excess quantity of water even if they get excess water that they can you know release into the atmosphere through stromata so that is their adaptation stems of these plants are usually hard enough to face pressure of the wind currents the stems uh, of creepers and tw- twiners are however delicate and well adapted to creep on the ground the plants have also well developed root system in hot climate plants grow in the cracks and rocks where it is shady and relatively cool or they flower in the spring to avoid the summer heat okay so to avoid the summer heat they usually bloom during the spring time annual plants survive the dried hot weather by having a short life cycle during the spring season they flower quickly and produce a large number of seeds which remain in the soil until the next rain so uh, this these are the very minute yet unique modifications done by all the mesophytes who want to you know evade uh, the extreme uh, heat and they still they want to produce their offsprings okay now hydrophytes uh, so thirdly we are coming to the hydrophytes which are uh, the plants inhabiting watery habitats we have the aquatic plants hydrilla nelambu we have acornica okay so many we have we all see uh, them around these have smooth leaves and waxy deposits leaves of plants growing in running water are ribbon shaped these plants have less developed roots the roots are provided with air space and air pockets to help hydrophytic plants in uh, you know flotation so they float because of their hydrophytic um, you know because of their less developed roots and uh, it helps in the aeration also so that they become light and they can float okay so these were the uh, category of uh, different plants who uh, being in different habitat uh, adjust with their surroundings okay in every way and they ha- they have been developed in the same in that way itself okay they have not made it they were uh, made by the almighty and they were having this uh, you know adaptation features from the very beginning now we are coming to the adaptations in animals okay the animals which live on land are called the terrestrial animals okay they differ in their habitats um, and in the area of living they usually classified as uh, you know runners burrowers diggers climbers flyers like that so these animals have special adaptations in their feet the, these adaptations are being given below like what are the ad- adaptations they have this uh, you know pentadacetyl uh, that is the bear uh, fine digits 
they bear fine digits um, in their feet which bear claws feet are meant for walking and running okay secondly they have the adaptation plan a uh, palm and sole of a foot foot rest on the ground example bear okay so that is called actually plantigrade adaptation then we have the digitigrade adaptation which helps the animal walk and run upon digits of their feet example dogs and cats then we have the angli grade adaptation which help the animal walk and run on their tips of the digit nail of those digits are modified into hooves like we have for the horses and the rhinos okay some animals have you know two footed mode of locomotion this is called the uh, you know bipedality uh, for, uh, for example the human being some 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 terrestrial animals have tapering heads and snouts these modifications help them digging and burrowing like we all know it is uh, in case of the mole snake shrew etc some an- animals respire through lungs example frogs birds lizards cats cows and humans so whether it com- it comes to uh, y- you know breathing why uh, even if it comes to their own habitat they have the special arrangements done uh, same as the plants the animals that help them to you know cope up with their surroundings okay the for example let's take take the you know example of a camel why are they called the ship of the desert we all know okay because they help in transportation they can walk long distances without getting tired they have very small eyes so and so that the none um, like the sand sand particles cannot get into okay they have the um, you know fat stored in their hump it makes them you know more energetic they they don't feel tired okay so there are so many reasons that uh, a camel has been born uh, there in the desert and not in you know antarctica so uh, these are the adaptations that we have like the people who live in the hilly regions suppose in darjeeling kashiang then if if we go to garhwal if we go to uttarakhand jammu kashmir we will see that they are so well adapted if we go we feel so cold we will come all red eyes uh, we will have the 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 swelling because we are not used to we are the people of the planes right those who are not um adaptive to so much of hard work but the people of the hilly region they are more hard working they are sincere they can walk for long distances okay they are more courageous okay but we we cannot uh, we don't have those qualities in us why because we ha- have been created in different way uh, and they have been created in different way okay now aquatic animals uh, co- comprise both the fresh water and the marine life form some insects live in uh, live can be actually aquatic and semi aquatic some uh, important aquatic f- animals are fishes whales dolphins frogs we all know some specific uh, adaptations found commonly in aquatic animals are like they have steam lined bodies okay they have the stream lined bodies their bodies are compressed laterally to reduce friction by water it helps them in swimming fins of fishes and flippers of whale act as swimming organs some fishes have air blubbers and um, uh, like um, sorry air bladders which maintain buoyancy and help in swimming some aquatic animals have gills which help them in direct exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide between blood and water thus gills have uh, help those animals in breathing such as in fishes so the fishes are modified in such a way that they can tolerate the water current they can tolerate the uh, the the stream upflow downflow everything okay and that also few few, few fish live in the uh, you know stagnant water few fish live in the stream which is always flowing okay that in there also there are modifications all cannot live in the uh, in the same water some animals uh, are adapted to aerial uh, mode of life as they remain in uh, air most of the time other animals are not truly adapted to such mode of life as they come to trees of trees for the purpose of protection or for 
you know other interests like the monkeys frogs squirrel flying lizard all of these are called arboreal okay so arboreal animals or the aerial animals have four limbs of uh, their their four limbs are modified into wings that help them in flying okay they have hollow bones which reduces their body weight they have strong flight muscle they have strong heart and lungs and these animals beaks which are adapted to particular ways of feeding so the arboreal animals which can actually go from one end of the tree to the other are uh, uh, you know equipped with so many body modifications from the very beginning that it helped them it has made them uh, unique okay other animals cannot do a cheetah is not having the same quality like an uh, li- like a you know uh, monkey okay so uh, there are specific habit uh, habitat and depending on the habitat their food uh, intake varies depending on that also they live in the other you know different habitats which make their qualities unique all right uh, we will stop here today children i want you to go through the till whatever we have uh, read these uh, this chapter is particularly of minute informations which you need to remember so i really hope you will go through the entire video and then you will uh, have a good read of the book if you have liked the video please click the like button comment to let me know if you have any doubts and if you are new to my channel please subscribe the channel and stay with me i'll be back with the part 2 portion very soon till then take care